Hi friends, today we're talking about Wildlife 101, an intro to wildlife photography. Yes, this video is definitely geared towards beginning photographers. So the number one rule that we're gonna have for photographing wildlife is to respect that wildlife. Photographing wildlife should be about bringing value and awareness to these animals, but never about putting them in a stressful position so we can get a great photograph. Yes, absolutely. This video will hopefully help provide you ways to photograph the wildlife in respectful yet safe manners. To help maintain a safe and respectable distance from wildlife, you will want to shoot with a telephoto lens. A minimum of 200 millimeters is a good starting point, but a 400 or 600 millimeter will get you up close to that wildlife. A less expensive option than purchasing one of those big expensive lenses is to rent one. We recommend borrowlenses.com and there's a coupon code in the description below. Yeah, and just for reference, I'm currently shooting my wildlife photos with the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Yep, and I have the Sigma uh, 60 to 600 Sport um, lens that goes on my Nikon body. Yeah, so they are very versatile, having a, a little bit of a range. I'll use my 100 to 400, not just for wildlife, but for some landscape photography as well. And with Warren's being 60 to 600, that's a huge range. So they're, they're pretty good lenses to have. Yeah, they really are. And they're affordable options. They're not the, the granddaddy expensive lenses that you see out there in sports and wildlife. They are a more affordable consumer level kind of lens, but they do a great job and they get us out there shooting wildlife. So one thing to keep in mind when shooting with a telephoto lens, though, is that they're heavier, they're bigger, so it has a potential to add shake to your image. We suggest to stabilize the camera using either a monopod or a tripod to help counteract that shake. And the larger the focal length, the more shake you will see within the image. It magnifies it or amplifies that, that movement. So you always want to be on a tripod, as Mary said. Another way to achieve a sharp image is ensuring that you have a high enough shutter speed that minimizes the camera shake. A recommendation is the bottom number of your shutter speed being twice the focal distance of your lens. So if you're using a 400 millimeter lens without a tripod, we suggest you start looking for a shutter speed around 1 800th. The next tip we have is do not follow or chase wild animals. This may seem obvious, but we've seen it done before. So we just want to make <laughs> sure that we're very clear on this. Obviously, you could scare or startle the animals if you follow or chase them. When photographing a wild animal or any animal, the last thing a photographer wants to do is stress that animal out just to get the shot. It is absolutely not worth the shot. If they start coming towards you, you want to get out of the way. You may be standing in between their food source, um, their den, their babies could be um, past you. So if they start coming at you, please do not automatically assume that they're coming <laughs> to you to pose for your camera because they are not. It's likely they're trying to get past you. Or eat you. Or eat you. <laughs> so always be aware of your environment. We kid about that, but some wildlife is is a lot larger than we are. So they could do you harm. So be aware and stay in a safe distance. One of the other ways that you can be a respectful wildlife photographer is not to feed or bait the animals. And that can actually alter their natural behaviors. Feeding and baiting animals causes them to get used to, used to us and become dependent on humans, interfering with their natural hunting instinct. Mm -hmm. By feeding the animals something not part of their natural diet, it can alter the metabolism. And lastly, when animals are fed by humans, this could make, also make them more likely to come into populated areas, resulting in them potentially hurting someone while looking for food and then causing them to be euthanized, hit by a car, or they could wander into areas where they could be hunted and trapped. Yeah, we've even seen in Arizona where um, bears, coyotes, you know, wildlife will be seen in neighborhoods and to protect the people living in those neighborhoods, they take those animals and, and they'll often euthanize them. So we definitely don't want to encourage that type of behavior. Um, another thing we want to mention is that we know that many people travel with their pets for several different reasons. It could be companionship or security. They could be your service pet, but it's so important to keep your pets out of the way of wildlife. We don't want to place your pet or the wildlife in danger. If your pets go after the wildlife, it may spook them, in turn causing that wildlife to attack your pet or attack you. Either way, we don't want to put pets 
or wildlife in danger. So this one may seem like common sense, but we're talking about it because we've seen it happen. Do not handle or pose animals. While it sounds silly, we have heard of macro photographers actually freezing bugs so they can pose them with minimal or no movement from the insect. Yeah, they may even add them to little like shoe box dioramas or whatnot, you know, trying to make art of it, you know, trying to add raindrops and, and such. But again, we're harming this animal for what? For, for, for a picture, yeah. um, not anything we want to encourage. Um, one thing that we do want to encourage, though, is to have yourself educated on wildlife behavior. So if you know you're going to go out and photograph, the understanding their behavior is going to help you predict their movements, resulting in more intimate photos. It can also help you determine when they may be feeling stressed out, um, allowing you to give them a little bit more room by backing off. And it is going to make a more comfortable environment for them. And if they're not stressed, you, again, you may have more intimate photos that way. In researching the animals as well, this is gonna help you determine what time of day that the animals are gonna be most active, how they interact, where they are located, where they wanna, where they like to hang out. The one last thing we want you to remember to bring is your patience. You cannot predict animals' presence or behaviors. Oftentimes, we may be out waiting for hours and still have no luck. Be prepared, bring water, wear comfortable clothes, and enjoy your time in nature. Yeah, we have, we have um, scheduled so many meetups and photo outings where we've gone to photograph wildlife, such as the horses or owls. And there are some nights that we come away with um, some so many great images. Yeah. And then there's nights that we walk away with nothing. And as a host, obviously, we feel bad. But again, we're unable to predict when and where these animals will be. But if you get out there and you be patient, then you're gonna have more luck than if you're sitting at home. So um, we've come to the portion of the video where we're gonna give you some camera setting tips. We know this is why a lot of you are here. So as a good start, we would have you set your, your aperture in the lowest available aperture or f-stop. So if you're new to photography, you're gonna look for an f-stop number. Typically, they're gonna be somewhere between 5.6 and 20, Two, 24. Mm -hmm. um, you want to be on the lower end of that. So 5.6, if you have 2.8, that's a great option. Then you're going to want to set your ISO to somewhere in the mid range between 400 to 800, or you can utilize auto ISO. And what this is going to do is ensure a fast enough shutter speed, at least twice the reciprocal of your focal length, as Warren mentioned before, to ensure sharp images. Yes. Another good starting point is shooting an aperture priority. With your aperture as low as your lens allows and ISO high enough to maintain your shutter speed. So we're gonna move on to composition. And as far as composition, one guideline that you might wanna keep in mind is the rule of thirds. So that's when you take that tic-tac-toe grid and place that in your frame. You'll want to put um, the main focal point of your wildlife in one of those intersecting points. Um, you'll also want to have your wildlife going into the frame. So if you have a lot of empty space, you'll want the wildlife going into that empty space instead of like at the edge of a picture, looking like it's trying to run out of the picture or fly out of the picture. So um, rule of thirds is a, is a good place to start. Another good place is to start is filling your frame with the animal. And it helps show off the animal's detail and facial expressions. Yeah, there's something really intimate about those close-up detail shots. I love them. But at the same time, don't be afraid to get a wide shot and show the wildlife's environment. Yeah, I absolutely love it. When some of your images of the wild horses out here standing in the, in the river, drinking at sunset, beautiful image. It really tells a story of why the horses are there, what they're doing, and you know the environment around them. So yeah. I love those kind of images as well when we do wildlife. And a sense of wanting to protect them. You see them in their home, That's and, right. and it kind of encourages and, and makes you want to protect them. <laughs> the one thing to remember is these are just guidelines. Don't be afraid to experiment, get outside of the guidelines, and, and do something different. You might find something that works really well for wildlife photography. So the next thing we want to talk about is different focus modes. So there are two typical focus modes, there's single shot um, or servo, and there's also continuous. There is a lot of discussion, a lot of opinions, which is better for wildlife, single shot or continuous autofocus. But in all honesty, for me at least, it comes down to a preference. 
Um, single shot, though, is when you aim at your subject, lock focus on it, and then release the shutter button. Yep. With continuous autofocus, once you focus on your subject, the camera will keep the subject in focus as it moves. This would seem like the best option for wildlife, but it can result in missed focus or blurry images from time to time. We prefer this option for fast moving wildlife such as birds, but prefer single focus for slower moving animals. Yeah. Uh, some newer cameras are gonna yeah. offer other options as well, such as eye and subject det detection to help you focus and to help, to help you get sharper images. So you'll wanna read your camera manual to see if your camera offers these. And if so, the, the manual will tell you how to enable those. So how you focus on a subject becomes a personal preference that you will develop as you practice wildlife photography. You'll just find out what works best for you. One of the things I figured out when I started shooting wildlife and hockey photography is I utilize the back button focus. And what I do is I put autofocus continuous on my camera and then I can follow the action with the back button focus button push down. It'll follow and continuously focus. When I want the focus to stop and lock on to a certain point, say like the goalie waiting in the net, I can focus and then let go of that button and it won't refocus until I push that button again. So it's really kind of a versatile way to focus. I know a lot of wildlife people and sports photographers use that approach. So um, we hope from this video you've learned our number one rule is to be respectful, but I hope we gave you some camera settings to start with. Obviously, as you get in the field, you can adjust them um, but this at least gives you a place to start and we want you to get out there and have so much fun with this But remember to stay safe and keep our wildlife safe We hope you enjoyed this video and found some value in it. If so, please like comment and share with your friends We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel to see us on our next adventures And please join us on our Facebook community explore a, co a community for photographers We're gonna put the group information down below in the description and we would love for you guys to share your wildlife images with us So until next time get out there and explore Create and, and do, do good. good. See ya. Bye.